Every morning in Yongsing County, located in Hunan, it is first light. A high-speed train roars past, waking an ancient village named Banyang. Old bridges, folk houses, old private schools, and ancestral halls. All of these are symbols of the farming culture in ancient China that have shaped Banyang through time. And it is these structures that have become the distinguishing markers of the prosperous Liu family. Today, 1,623 descendants still live in the houses left by their ancestors, practicing their family mottos and living a simple life. Towards the end of the Yuan dynasty, there were many wars. To preserve the Liu clan's bloodline, the sons parted ways. One band of Liu brothers went to Mount Nanling in southern Hunan, bringing nothing with them. The local villagers of Nanling helped the brothers. Every one of them donated something and built a temporary home for them to live in. The brothers could only count on their own diligence. They went from serving as waiters to running their own businesses and soon saw their businesses growing. They married local girls and later had children. The Liu brothers had finally settled in Banyang village. The people saw village commerce growing and soon Banyang village saw the establishment of its first bank and first street of commerce. Looking back, the brothers never forgot the help the villagers gave them and the hardship of their first business. They remind their children that forsaking friendship for profit will be looked down upon by society and being generous will make a family prosper. In more than 600 years of development, the Liu family kept growing bigger, like a big tree with a tenacious vitality, spreading to several counties and cities nearby. 346 villages were formed with more than 80,000 people. So why does Banyang have such fortunate descendants in its later years? What is the secret to their prosperity? Liu Jianchao is part of the 29th generation and the editor of the Liu's 10th genealogy. When he was compiling the genealogy, he discovered the numerous charitable actions of his ancestors in the records. This is the secret of the Liu clan's prosperity. Most of us in the clan give priority to righteousness. Mm. Ah, this was passed down for generations. Let me show you. Here, you can see in the county records all our good deeds. For example, Mr. Tsong Lin. He is a Confucianist. And he also helped the poor. Liu Tsong Lin is part of the 10th generation. He saved a lot of money with the business he inherited from his father. During the Ming Dynasty, a county named Pingjiang suffered crop failure due to an infestation. Farmers became homeless. When Liu Tsong Lin knew of this, he donated his grains and bought 60,600 kilos more. He paid the county government to help the people in need. This was reported to the capital. Emperor Ying Tsong admired Liu Tsong Lin for being generous in aiding the affected people and rescuing them. The court praised him. Yeah, they said he was a chivalrous man. And he was honored with the, the uh, family of righteousness. When he came back after he received the imperial edict, the officials invited him and honored him again. And not only that, the villagers also held a large banquet, which we call the, uh, the, uh, the ancient feast of the Zhou dynasty. Everyone in the village honored him with uh, the feast. Welcome, everyone. The ancient feast was recorded in the chapter of wine from the book entitled Etiquette. It is a ceremony to welcome those who are not members of the family. The host's hospitality and wealth can be seen through welcoming and pleasing guests and other procedures. They serve a mix of Guangzhou, Anhui, and Hunan cuisines.
and call it the Ten Bowls of Meat. Wang Mingxi is a scholar who has specifically studied ancient feasts. He believes the continuation of this ceremony is related to Liu Tsonglin's being honored by the court. It is the first time this feast was held for family members who have performed charitable deeds. This must be done in front of ancestral tablets, okay? And the activity must be held in an ancestral hall. It means that we are holding this event here to give all our ancestors a report. How their descendants have all made contributions to the society and also won our ancestors' great honor. In the Liu clan's genealogy, Liu Tsonglin's charitable action did not deplete his family fortunes. In fact, he made many friends because he valued righteousness and generosity. His business also expanded. It spread to Hunan, Hubei, Guangdong, and Guangxi. Throughout history, some families have carried on for hundreds or even over a thousand years. Owing to their family motto, the families always pass on this righteous virtue. In Chinese culture, the people have had insights through this wisdom. That is, uh, when people are faced with a lot of benefits, many of them who only strive for it always fail to get them. Only when we strive for benefits after righteousness will we make a long-term profit. This is the reason his family has been prosperous for a long time, because they've adhered to the principle of righteousness. The villagers found the answer from ancestors who've made a fortune in business. To make a good profit in an ethical manner is appropriate. In fact, most people who are engaging in business do so in a righteous manner. For 600 years, members of the Liu family have followed the tradition and encouraged their descendants to start a business and build branches. They conduct themselves well, abiding by their motto, forsaking friendship for profit will be looked down upon. Liu Jianting is of the 26th generation of the clan. Just like those who work outside the village, his success in business is from the family tradition and his ancestors' experience. Today, he understands the family motto, forsaking friendship for profit will be looked down upon. Generosity will bring fortune. I think it doesn't matter which generation we live in, we should always choose to be righteous and loyal people. If we do, people will trust us more because we are honest. In fact, being loyal helps both us and other people. Do not pursue fame, do good deeds, and do not tell others. This is from the Liu family's genealogy. Liu Jianting uses this to encourage himself. To outsiders, Liu Jianting is a serious person and a quiet man. But on the other hand, to many people, he is warm-hearted and helpful because of his actions. When he donated millions of yuan for the upkeep of Banyang, he asked the villagers to keep it a secret. Also, some years ago, he helped a dozen poor students complete their education without asking for any compensation. Till this day, only a few know about it. After graduating from junior middle school, my family wasn't doing very well. I decided to work, but Mr. Liu found me. He Jiansheng is from Longxing Share Town. His father died early. His mother worked hard to raise three children pulling a cart. They lived a poor life. In 2009, they could not afford to pay his education. He Jiansheng studied hard but eventually faced the same fate as his brothers, to farm at home or to work outside the village. It was only by chance that Liu Jianting knew about He Zhanchang from a student he financed. After hearing about his situation from his school, Liu Jianting subsidized He Zhanchang as his 30th student. I helped He Zhanchang out when he and his family were having financial trouble. Uh, so that he could focus more on his education and stop worrying. With five years of tuition and 500 yuan per month, Ha Jiansheng was no longer affected by his financial troubles. His mother receives 1,000 yuan each month from Liu Jianting's trusted messengers. His family was very touched. In 2009, 
Ha Jun Sheng was able to complete his studies at a mining institute. He was then recruited to join a local coal mining business, where he became a security technician. In his spare time, he had the opportunity to speak with Liu Jianting, and they got to know more about each other. Maybe he will follow my family's teachings because it probably made an impact on him and his family. To Ho Jian Shang, Liu Jianting was like an elder brother. Sometimes he could also be a strict teacher. Under Liu Jianting's care, in less than four years, Ha Jian Shang became the business's backbone and assistant chief engineer in charge of technology. His family's life gradually improved. He has Liu Jianting to thank for the material aid and spiritual support given to his family. This also helped him get out of his despair. As he was working hard, he emulated Liu Jianting by helping a relative of his colleague. When his mother heard about what he did, she was so proud of her son. From receiving help to helping others, Ha Chan Shang enjoys the feeling that he gets when he helps other people. Now, as a team member of the young volunteers in Chenzhou, Ha Chan Shang and some like minded colleagues devote their spare time to public welfare activities. Charitable actions, to me, are like, like lanterns, because if we light one lantern, we can use it to light many. And uh, many descendants were influenced by their ancestors. Liu Jianting is one of those people. His deeds also influence others outside his family. It will spread out from there. One man can influence thousands of people, and maybe uh, the whole society. Do good deeds without asking for a reward. The villagers are influencing others by conforming to this teaching. This is also the reason the Liu family has prospered for so long. It can be said that the villagers understand the importance of being righteous. They believe that a man must have a good heart before he does good deeds. A man does good with a warm heart. A family prospers from generosity. The Liu family has upheld these principles for generations. In the eyes of the elder Liu Ronggui, it is still an effective strategy for managing a household. As one of the 28th generation, Liu Ronggui came back to his hometown after he retired in 1985. In his spare time, he would walk around, recalling his childhood. During one of his walks, Liu Ronggui found that the pathway to the nearby school was uneven. On rainy days, the road would become muddy. The children would have to tread carefully. I wanted to fix it, but I did not have the money. What could I do? I had to think of ways to earn some. So besides taking out money from my salary, I started to raise some money through fundraising. In 2008, Liu Ronggui was 83 years old. He gathered the elders in the ancestral hall and told them about his idea to fix the road. To show his intention, he took out the 35,000 yuan he had already prepared to serve as the first donation for the road. Following his charitable action, everyone opened their wallets, and within one day, 1,079 men in the village donated 250,000. Meanwhile, the clansmen who worked outside the village heard the news about repairing the pathway for the school children and responded by sending money. In less than a month, they raised 1,110,000 yuan for the road. From Banliang to the school, the road was 3,500 meters long. To turn the whole road into a three-meter-wide cement one, one can imagine how difficult it would be without any large equipment. After some negotiation, they divided less than 100 people into several groups. They brought their own meals and took turns in repairing the road every day. They all used picks and shovels to gradually repair the pathway. 
Seeing their enthusiasm, Liu Ronggui's passion was reignited. So with his own money, he went to the next town to buy lunch for the villagers working on the road. I could only buy uh, no more than a hundred. How did you bring so many steam buns here? With a carrying pole. I had large buckets and filled them with porridge. And the steam buns were in a basket. He bought porridge and steamed buns for the working villagers. Every day with a carrying pole, he would walk two kilometers back and forth. He did this for more than half a year. News spread to the nearby villages about a strange old man from Banyang village who often walked back and forth on the new pathway. When some curious villagers were about to go see this strange man, Yorongui went to his own courtyard and set up a pot where he cooked peanuts. Yorongui served them to the visiting tourists whom he knew would be hungry. The people of Banyang village come from one bloodline. It is now in its 33rd generation. Streets and alleys paved with bluestones connected more than 360 houses from the Ming and Qing dynasties. The special charm and architecture in Banyang are what attracts many visitors to the quaint village. Hospitality is a tradition in Banyang. Every day, Liu Ronggui sets up a table at the gate to his yard, providing free tea for exhausted visitors. One day, when tourists came to visit, he thought of giving them a special treat from the village, peanuts. He used some of his savings to buy raw peanuts to cook at home. Once cooked, he hands them out for free to the visitors. He has been doing this for the past four years. In his eyes, this is the nature of hospitality. Watching the visitors enjoy the peanuts and chatting with them fills his heart with both satisfaction and great delight. Some of them paid me. They gave me a hundred yuan, but I do not sell peanuts. <laughs> you do not want them he to He gave pay me you. the money, but I refused. Uh, mm. I am not doing this for business at all. He would despise me. Repairing the road made him strong, while treating visitors to peanuts made him popular. Liu Ronggui is always laughing with others, and many know him as the strange but simple man. Now, nearly 90 years old, the story of his charitable actions has earned a good reputation for Banyang. Liu Ronggui was able to repair the road with a donation of others, as well as his own. When he gave steamed buns and cooked peanuts for tourists, he brought happiness to many people. So, sometimes you cannot buy warmth or happiness, however rich you are. That is why we say, every one of us can perform charity by doing good deeds. Goodness depends on us, and not on money. It also does not depend on status uh, and power. Uh, Liu Ronggui is an admirable old man and is still healthy. That is why we can say kind men live long lives. Any member of the family who does good deeds or is exceptionally loyal will be honored in the records of the Liu clan. One man's success is the success of all. This is the belief of the Liu clan, which they have held for hundreds of years. To keep their businesses prosperous, the ancestors have thought of ways to motivate their descendants. As you can see, this is us stopping by our family's pond. We have all decided to settle down by ponds, so there's always a crescent-shaped pond in every village. The Liu clan puts value in having ponds in their village. Traditional villages in southern China are known for this, and ponds often appear in front of ancestral halls. They drain water, prevent fire, and are in accordance with feng shui rules to run from wind and save water. Throughout southern Hunan, the 346 villages have all built their ponds into a crescent shape. The moon waxes only to wane, water recedes only to overflow. The ancestors of the Liu family used this design to remind their clansmen to always be polite and stay humble. That is a natural law.
our forefathers would often emphasize the importance of being both humble and modest. Having a humble mentality and behavior, regardless of the situation we are in, will bring us a good result. The pond's design may look very simple on the outside, but from its, its origin and from the philosophy behind the structure, it prevents the possibility for some of the Liu descendants uh, to deplete the clan's fortune because of their pride and indulgence. And this, I think, is a wise way of doing that. A righteous person must be kind and must focus on developing their morality. This is another motto of the Liu family, which they use to teach not only their own children, but also other people. To foster good morals, villagers express cultural education life values and ethics through various proverbs. Written on steels, in couplets, and on walls, they serve as a reminder for the descendants. These proverbs serve as a guide and tell descendants to keep their behavior in check and to follow the family rules. Banyang lies in a mountainous area where villagers live and farm by natural springs. For local villagers, water is a precious resource. Water flows bountifully from the Banyang spring and has a sweet taste. Neighboring villages envy them for this. During droughts, the spring is a sustaining life force that provides water for all. In the years of Emperor Yin Zhang's rule, this is actually a common occurrence. The drought in southern Hunan was so great. Uh, in the other places, the water in the springs dried up. But here in Banliang village, the water in the spring uh, did not dry up. We have water, but compared to the good years, it was still less. At that time, uh, the people from the other villages came here for water. The villagers here did their best as much as they could. They prioritized the visitors who came for water. Uh, they were treated like royalty, and that water goes to the villages without water so that other people can drink. The villagers are lenient with others, but strict on themselves. This is what they learn from their ancestors. In order for the descendants to develop a love and respect for water, the ancestors made a detailed plan for the only water source in the village. Based on the direction of the flow, they divided the spring into three parts. Each pond has a different function and use. When we wash our dishes, we wash them here because this part is clean. And as for uh, vegetables, like if you want to wash your vegetables, uh, we use the second pond and the water will flow gradually to the third pond. That is for the clothes. Our clothes can be washed in dirty water. The first section is for drinking. The second is for washing vegetables and for livestock to drink from. The third is for washing clothes. The flowing water can be used to water the crops. Even the children are aware of the pond's rules and follow them. This family has become a charitable family. They have been like this for hundreds of years because they all fully understand that a family or a man must rely on morals and cannot rely on whatever inheritance they have. Lao Tzu said a man should take care of others so as to enrich himself. When you give to other people, you will receive more. When you help other people, you will find that your world is actually bigger. So this family rule is the fundamental wisdom telling everyone that it is the prosperity of a family that should be considered in the long term through hundreds of years or more. It is important to broaden our vision. This is the main viewpoint. The people who live in Banyang have been practicing and upholding the clan traditions for the past 600 years. For the villagers in Banyang, helping others can also be a source of personal happiness. When one is charitable, one is kind. Some villages near us have a hard time getting drinking water. There is none on the mountains. They have to come here just for drinking water. So you allow other people from neighboring villages to get water oh, from here? Yes, that is fine. We welcome them. No one would criticize them here. 
If they want all the water, no problem. Ah, the culture of this village is the best. Day after day, the villagers live a peaceful life. The Liu clan's descendants adhere to the belief that kindness leads to prosperity. They know that if they believe that acts of charity are a source of happiness, then they will become just that. And this is the reason that Banyang villagers have a simple and happy life. Sous-titrage 